Well, hello again. Well, today's video is for Sunday, June 20th. And you know what? There's two special things today. Can you know, do you know what they are? Can you guess? Well, number one, it's the first day of summer. Yay! And what else is it today? What? It's Father's Day. So, today's book is both about a dad and being outside with a dad riding a motorcycle through a city called Corona, California, the city where today's, the author of today's book grew up. And it's guess, well you guess, it's called My Papi Has a Motorcycle. Have you ever ridden on a motorcycle? I never have, but it, it seems like it must be a whole bunch of fun. Let's read and find out, okay? My Poppy Has a Motorcycle Written by Isabel Quintero Illustrated by Zeke Pena My puppy has a motorcycle. From him, I've learned words like carburetor and carino, drill and dedication. When I hear his gray truck pull into our driveway, I run outside with both of our helmets. My puppy, the carpenter, is covered in sawdust and smells like a hard day at work. His hands are rough from building homes every day. His job since he first arrived in this country. But even though he comes home tired, he always has time for me. When our city is winding down, he takes me for a ride. Today, he's going to show me the new houses he's working on. Poppy is careful with my ponytail as he pulls my helmet tight. When he lifts me onto the smooth black seat, his hands don't feel rough. They don't feel tired. They feel like all the love he has trouble saying. Poppy revs the engine. And the smell of gasoline hits me as he squeezes the accelerator. The motor rumbles and growls. And then we take off! The shiny blue metal of the motorcycle glows in the sun. The sun! The sun! The bright orange sun is on its way down, turning our sky blue and purple and gold. We become a spectacular celestial thing soaring on asphalt, a comet. The sawdust falling from Poppy's hair and clothes becomes a tail following us. Poppy zigzags through the street. We pass Amulitis Church and Tortilleria La Estrella and stop for stray cats crossing in front of us. Mommy thinks there's too many of them, but I think there's just enough. We pass Joy's Market, where Mommy buys my gummy bears. Mr. Garcia, our librarian, is walking out the door and nods at us. We nod back. This is how we always greet each other. We roar past murals that tell our history of citrus groves and immigrants who worked them, and of the famous road race that took place on Grand Boulevard a hundred years ago. Now, I know that we're stopping at Don Rudy's Raspados, but as we near the shop, we see that it's empty and out of business. I can tell Poppy is disappointed. 
I imagine the smell of the sweet syrups Don Rudy used to flavor our shaved ice. I won't be the only one who misses him. As we ride on, I feel and hear everyone and everything we pass by. Each sound landing in my ears rebuilds whole neighborhoods inside, whole neighborhoods inside me. <laughs> no matter how far I go from this place or how much it changes, this city will always be with me. We cruise by Abuelito and Abuelita's old yellow house, the one with the lemon tree that grew from the seeds of the lemons Abuelito used to pick not far from here. Mommy says we're going to visit them tomorrow to cut nopales from the garden and eat herby albondigas in Abuelita's kitchen, where the food always tastes better. We turn the corner and... The dogs behind the fences go wild. <laughs> Frankie, the Lopez's Labradoodle, escapes from her yard and runs after us. Mercedes Lopez, the fastest runner in our class, runs after her. Then, just as fast, the dogs barking and Mercedes and Frankie become a soft hush in the distance. We ride toward the new homes, replacing the last of the citrus groves. The painters, drywallers, and floor layers all greet us, but we can barely hear their words amid the sounds of hammers and air compressors. Even with all that noise, my poppy's voice touches everything. This is my favorite part. Around the circle. Vamos, puppy, faster, faster. On Grand Boulevard, we lean into the curve of the street. I make believe that we're in one of the races that took place here so long ago. It's our last lap and we, we have to win. The crowd cheers us on. I feel Poppy smile as I squeeze my arms tighter around him. We fly around the circle. There's the school where we practice soccer. There's the post office where Mr. Charlie takes our letters. And the Pandoria where Poppy buys conches on Sunday mornings. Here it is, all of our beautiful city. My eyes try to catch everything, but the colors of houses blend into one another. Red, blue, green, orange, pink. We ride, 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 until the blue glow from the motorcycle begins to dim and our comet tail has been left behind, behind on the streets we've traveled. We head home and slowly, the engine echoes us back onto our street and then our driveway, our finish line. Mommy and little brother hear the motorcycle and run out to greet us. Mommy waves us in, just like a referee. Poppy and I can't stop laughing. We had a good ride. Through our laughter, I hear a familiar sound. I think about our city and all the changes that it's been through and all the changes that will come. But I know that here in our little house, there are things that will always stay the same. The end. Well, it was kind of a cool book, right? You know, um, Isabel Quintero, the author said, she wrote this in honor of her dad. And one of her fondest memories from when she was a little girl was of her dad coming home from work and putting her on the back of his bright blue motorcycle to take a spin around their city, Corona, California. And did you notice 
in watching the video that there's a lot of Spanish words in the illustrations. And if you read Spanish, go back and watch it again and you can pick up what, what they say. But if you don't know Spanish, here's a hint. The little girl asked for a bubblegum and strawberry syrup on her raspada. And where did your parents grow up? You might ask them. What's different about where they grew up than what they remember? You should ask and find out, right? But if everything changes, do some things not change? Well, think about that. The little girl at the end of this book realized, wait a minute, even though Corona was changing, what was going to stay the same? Her love for her father, her father's love for her, their family, her memories of her family. Those are going to last forever. And what else never changes? Though almost everything in our life changes as we grow. Hmm. I bet you can guess. The love of Jesus. Jesus always loves us, and that never changes, right? Now, have a good week. I'll see you next week, and we'll, we'll read another cool story. Okay, bye-bye.